It's not you. It's me. Hey my sweet pen friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin. For today's video, I thought I'd try something a little bit different on my channel. It's all meant to be in good fun, but I'm going to be talking about some stationery that I am breaking up with. Two things I want to touch on before we dive into the rest of the video. First being that I'm having a giveaway over on my Instagram. In case you missed that initial announcement, I will leave a link to that post in the description box below. Head on over there for a chance to win your very own Rocketbook Panda Planner. It's pretty awesome because you can use your Pilot Friction implements as well as Uniball RE. Essentially anything that uses that same heat sensitive erasing technology. And if you love analog planning, but also really appreciate the digital aspect, this is an option that bridges the two. It's pretty awesome, so I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned it. And the second thing is just a quick disclaimer that this video is meant to be fun and entertaining. In no way am I trying to offend or throw shade at any of these companies or any of you who happen to enjoy these particular items. And these are all things that I used to love and enjoy, but now have decided to move on from. So it's a very much personal experience, very opinion-based things coming up. So I just wanted to take a moment to clear the air on that. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the first item that I'm breaking up with, and that is the Lamy Safari fountain pens. Ooh, some of you are like, what? What is happening? And the other half of you are probably like, yeah, I, I didn't like those guys anyway. I feel like the Lamy Safari fountain pens divides people into two camps. You either love it or you hate it. If you're unfamiliar with the Lamy Safari, it is a cartridge converter pen. And something that's really awesome about these pens is that you can swap out the nibs. So essentially you can have multiple line variations and sizes with just one pen. And I think that's something really unique about the Lamy Safari. It's definitely a huge draw for if you want to have a lot of line variation, if you wanna have extra fine all the way to stub, this is kind of a pen that does it all. The thing is, I used to really enjoy using the Lamy Safari, but now that I've been using fountain pens for about two years now, and I preface, I want to preface what I'm about to say with, I still have so much to experience out there in terms of the fountain pen world and even further than that, the stationary world. So I don't expect my opinion to stay the same, especially because people are constantly pushing out new things and by people, I mean the companies. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think it's perfectly fine for our tastes to evolve and I think that's what happened here. I remember getting really excited about the Lamy Safaris, just it is a pen that is talked about a lot in the fountain pen community as a really great starter pen and I still think that's the case. I would still recommend the Lamy Safari to any of you if you're looking at fountain pens. I would definitely put that up for consideration. Now the two that I have here are the Lamy Safari All Black Edition and the Lamy Safari Petrol. So these are two limited edition or special edition fountain pens that Lamy released. They tend to do a special release every year and I know that the Petrol was a cult favorite, especially the ink. I couldn't get my hands on the ink but I got my hands on the pen and this is with a fine nib. I think the all black one is also a fine nib. I think the most polarizing thing for a lot of people would be the triangular grip. Some people love it, some people hate it. I am actually very grateful for it because it helped me correct my ridiculous death grip and I've talked about that in videos before. So that's something that I actually personally really enjoy about the Lamy Safari. I think I have just moved on from this particular 
finish of the pen because I do love my Lamy Lux and it is essentially the same body of pen just in a different material and for me this feels a lot better. I am excited to write with it. For me I look at these and that level of excitement is sort of cut in half. So the next stationary item that I am breaking up with, that I am parting ways with, is another fountain pen. And I know some of you guys are flipping out right now and I totally understand, but I'm gonna have to say goodbye to the Pilot Metropolitan. Again, another very beginner friendly starter recommended fountain pen. And I am not trying to sit here and take away any of those merits. I still think that those things are very valid and very true and I stand behind those opinions. But for me, it's again a pen that I am not super thrilled to ink up anymore. I'm glad that I tried it because Pilot makes amazing fountain pens and I have a couple. I have my Pilot Lucina, which I love and I think that would make me want to also look into getting a Pilot Prera. The Pilot Metropolitan is a cartridge converter pen. It does have one of those aerometric bladder converters. This is a really nice feeling pen. There's a bit of weight to it in comparison to something like the Lamy Safari. And the nibs are amazing. They are on the finer side and we all know that that's my preference when it comes to most of my writing implements. So it checks off a lot of the boxes for me. I do also like that it's sort of this all black finish. It's very sleek, very stylish, but I think I am not so much in love with the style of body anymore. I mean, it's still a good looking pen, but I don't know. It's almost like I'm trying to convince myself to keep it and that I just don't have room for that in my life right now. The way that I think about it is like laundry day. So laundry day comes around, you open your drawers and there's that outfit, right? That shirt, that pair of pants that you won't wear unless you've already worn everything and it's already in the dirty laundry. So for me, that's this pen. It's a fine pen. And I, I, I want to reiterate that. So if you have this pen or any of the stationary items that I'm talking about, like I understand why they are great. But for me, this is sort of that last outfit in my closet. Yeah, I've said that I've loved these things and that they're favorites, but the winds have changed. And unfortunately, that is the case for these mini so dual ended highlighters. I wanna say that I would still recommend these. If you are at a mini so and you see them and you don't already have zebra mild liners, you're thinking about an alternative to them, this is still a really great option. And if you wanna see my comparison video, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. I'll leave a link to all these things in the description box below if you wanna take a closer look. I'll also leave videos so you can hear my opinions on them versus how I'm talking about them now. But all in all, this is still a really great highlighter. I love that they have so many colors. It is pretty much a copycat of the Zebra Mild Liners. There are some slight differences, especially with the bullet tip. I think you'll notice that there's the most difference with that and a little bit of the colors, but for the most part, it's heavily inspired by the Zebra Mild Liners. I'm deciding to let these go because I finally started using my Zebra Mild Liners and I think after using the two, I prefer the Zebra Mild Liners and the difference between them is so subtle, but the softer tip on the Zebra Mild Liners, I've come to prefer. I thought that I liked the more stiff chisel tip on these, but 
like I said, my opinion has evolved, it's changed. Well, and I have to be honest, I'm quite partial to the Zebra Mild Liners because they do come in special edition releases. So I have a couple Pikachu Mild Liners and those are just adorable. They, Pikachu will not be denied, not in this household. So for those very small reasons, um, I'm gonna let these go and it just doesn't make sense to me to have two sets of highlighters that are essentially the same. I don't believe that that's what I need in my life right now or that I'll be able to use all these highlighters in my lifetime. So thank you mini so highlighters you have served me very well if you've been watching my channel for a while then you may remember me doing a little video on these washi tape organizers that was quite some time ago but if you remember that video let me know in the comment section below i'll also have it linked off in the description box if you want to watch it but these organizers were actually gifted to me by my sister. So Ate, if you're watching this, thank you. And she already knows that I've decided to let go of these, but they are just very simple acrylic organizers that you can stack on top of each other and you can store your washi tape. There's a little pink plastic doohickey in the middle that you can actually turn and pull out so that you can loop through your desired washi tapes and have them ready to use. These organizers also have teeth lined at the edge so you can treat it almost like a tape dispenser and easily pull off a piece of washi tape without having to take out any scissors. I had these on my desk for a while and I loved having my washi tape out on display, but it just didn't make sense to me to have my washi tape in two different places. So I would have washi tape in here and also in my desk drawer because I have so many rolls of washi tape and I also could have purchased more of these but I didn't want to take up more space on my desk than I needed to and at that point I was at a crossroads and I decided that I would just put all my washi tape inside my desk drawer. I still think that these are great acrylic organizers. They've held up really well. Again, for convenience of use, that is also a huge plus. If you do get some of these, I would recommend keeping them in a spot where there's not a lot of sunlight or it's sort of protected by sunlight, only because I noticed that my washi tape would fade because I had it kind of directly under the windowsill. It wasn't a total loss because I could just rip off the faded part and it would be like new again, but that's just something to keep in mind if you are interested in something like this. And that, my friends, is the roundup of stationery that I am breaking up with. I feel very confident in saying that it was an amicable split up. I think both parties feel very neutral and that it was just time to move on. So with that said, I would love to hear from you. Which of these items were you most surprised to hear that I was breaking up with? I would also love to hear from you. What stationary item have you broken up with recently? Was it a calm separation? like the ones that I shared here, or was there another reason? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with a pen friend who you think might also enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe and to turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I've been doing my best to upload here every Wednesday at 8 a.m. PST, so please take care until then. Feel free to enjoy these two videos linked here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.